was having a little copy and paste issues. Now I got them in, so we're good to go. So if I wanted to just bring down that quantity here, I just copied this up from the top. So my quantity for item 10 was 56, 40, 32, and 32. Again, I'm just trying to eliminate those zero, zeros so there's less numbers to see. Then I'm going to go ahead, divide that by my total to give me that percentage that I'm looking for. If I do the math, 35%. And then this is actually 25%, 20%, and 20%. Then I'm going to look at those allocated costs and multiply. Which will give me the joint costs that I need to allocate. And I got to do a little math and I'll come to, and I already did most of this, 134, 400, 96,000, 76, 800. And again, we want to just double check, make sure we're allocating this properly. And now we know how much should go to each of those products. All right, the last one here. We wanna know which of these products should we sell at split off and not process further. What we're gonna look at is how much additional sales am I getting compared to the additional cost that it takes. So again, let me come back up here, look at these numbers that I have. Let's see if I can do this again that'll be better otherwise I'm moving up and down too much there we go so now let's bring in those additional sales that we have so for product W10, you can see my additional sales are $30,000 because my sales, if I process further, are $366. My original sales are $336, giving me additional sales of $30,000. And I'm going to do that for each one. So $336 is my second the W20 compared to 288, giving me additional sales of 48,000. This W30 is 240 minus the 192, also giving me 48,000 in additional sales. And the last one was 160 compared to 144, giving me an additional 16,000 in sales. I compare that to my additional cost, just coming straight from the problem. And 12,000. And that's gonna tell me whether or not I should process it further or sell as is. If I process W10 further, I'm actually losing $6,000, so I should sell it. The W20, I'm going to make an additional $19,200 based on my cost and my income, so I should process this further. Oops, yeah. This one I'm making an additional 28.8, so I should process that one further. And same thing with W40. That's going to give me an additional income of 4,000, so that one too I should process further. 
So again, sometimes these simple concepts with so many numbers get a little confusing. So just take it step by step and kind of work through the numbers. Now let's go through this next set of problems where we look at allocating costs by department. This one too um, looks complicated with all the numbers and everything that's going on and the graphs. But if we take this step by step, I think you'll see it's not nearly as bad as it seems, maybe. I'm hoping. So again, I'm gonna, we're gonna be using this departmental information. So I'm gonna kind of shrink it and bring it down so we can see where we're pulling all those numbers from. Make it a little bit littler so that it's a little easier to see. You can go ahead and cross this. Cross this out. The first thing we're going to, oh, that's part of the original problem. Step three is doing the reciprocal method. I don't want you to get confused. This first one, it just ended up on the next page. The first one we're going to do here is the direct method. So under the direct method, we're just looking at these percentages and we're going to allocate the cost. So the costs that we're going to allocate are coming from these areas and what we want to do is eliminate them from the cost allocation and apply them to these areas. To do that we need to figure out what our percentage is based on our numbers here. So if I look at my just IT division, it's not. You can see that UG, and we have a big red, just for the IT section, UG is 40% out of a total combined 70%, which means I'm going to allocate 57% of those costs there and for the IT area, the grad is 30% out of the 70%. Therefore, I'm gonna add approximately 43%. Remember, we're just allocating these costs, so we need to make sure that everything comes back to 100 so we know we're allocating everything. So when I go through and I allocate just those IT costs, I'm gonna use these percentages that I have and I'm going to multiply that by that area to find out how much cost should be applied based on this allocation. So this first one, because it's 70% 70 70,000 that we're allocating, it's a little bit easier. We're going to take that 70,000, we're going to multiply it by the 57%, which comes to, I mean, there's some rounding here, but if you don't um, mess with the numbers, you'll get this. And because it's based on 70,000, we're going to know that this should be 30,000. Now I have to find those percentages for the EP allocation. The EP allocation we're doing the same thing because this is that direct method. So under EP, I look at those allocations for UG and grad. I'm looking at 25 over 75 and 50 over 75. So those percentages that I'm going to use are 33% and 67%. I have 90,000 to allocate in this area, so I'm going to take that 90,000 times this by the 33%. Take that 90,000 times this by the 67%. And then I'm 
going to do the math. And finally, we have one more, the CS allocation. I'm going to do the same thing. UG versus grad. I have 60% and 40%. So it's out of 100%. So really, you could have just used the 60 and 40. So I'm taking 100,000 times the 60%, which is going to be 60,000 and 40,000. And then we're going to add up our cost and make sure we've allocated everything. It just happens that they agree. All right, so that's your direct method. You're taking those costs just for those areas and applying it. Let's look at that same method here using that step method. So I'm going to use these numbers again, same numbers, same amounts. We're allocating the same cost, so the 70, 90, 100, but they tell me it goes from IT to EP to CS. Then we're going to allocate it to our other areas. So I'm going to take these percentages straight from the chart that's given. And if I want to allocate this 70,000, it's going to go 10% here, 20% here, 40 and 30. So if I just do that math, this would be 7,000. This would be 14,000, 28,000, and 21,000. Because all I'm doing is taking that percentage in that box and timesing it by the cost to be allocated. So now, I've already allocated to my IT area. No cost can come back, but now I'm going to allocate this EP area to the other areas. You can see I need to take out 97,000 to clear those costs out and apply them. And then I'm going to look at this second area for EP. I'm going to bring those percentages down and it's 25, 25 and 50. And now I'm allocating this 97,000. So this is 24 to 50. This is the same number. And 48,500. Again, I'm just taking the percentage and timesing it by the cost I need to allocate. Now I'm looking at this CS. The CS amount that I have to allocate is 138,250. And I need to allocate that to these two areas. And the percentages tell me it's 60 and 40. So 60% of that allocation would come here, and that's 89,950 and 55,300. Then what I'm going to do is add these numbers up, see what they come to, and I will be done. So that's your step allocation. It's not nearly as bad as it looks. And finally, let's look at this reciprocal method. Again, I want to bring down that information so I can look at it. In the reciprocal method, we're using these equations to allocate our costs. So the first thing I want to do is build those equations. For IT, 
I know that my costs are 70000 So that's easy. EP, my costs are going to be 90000 So that's those direct costs plus 10% of IT. And then I have the CS which my direct costs are 100,000. And I'm going to bring in 0.2 or 20% of IT. Oops. Plus 25% of EP. So now I'm going to start substituting and I'm going to bring in the smallest equation into this one and then I'll bring the, that equation here. So I can see that EP is going to equal 90,000 plus 10% of whatever this IT equation is equal to which is only 70,000. So EP I now know is 97,000, which is basically what we got in that same problem before in that step allocation. We're doing the same thing, we're just using a different method to get there. So now I can find that CS, because I know I take my direct costs, and I know it's point. 2% of IT, which I now know is 70,000. And I'm going to add in 0.25% of EP, which I now know is 97,000. And I can do all of this math, and it comes to 138,250, which, as you can see, is the same numbers that we got up in that step allocation. We're doing the same process, we're just looking at it a little bit differently. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to allocate these costs out the same way we did earlier. So the IT again is the 70,000 that we need to allocate. We're getting this this time though from these equations. 97 and 138,250. And because this is the same equations that we're looking at, we just got to that first part a little bit differently, all of these numbers are going to be the same as well. Because these percentages also don't change. This is still 40 and 30%. This is still 25% and 50%. And this is still 60 and 40. It's this reciprocal method, all of this does is look at it at an equation type basis. So hopefully that gets you through a lot of the homework for this chapter. Again, if you have questions, please just 